All right, I am back with yet another video of central station equipment. And here, as you can see right in front of us, we have the ITI CS4000 central station receiver. Now, you may, I'm sure you've seen my other one, which is the Radionics one that's in here. And eventually I'll make a demonstration video on that. I just haven't gotten it programmed yet. So this one, interesting story. I've had this one for a long time now. But it's been having a lot of issues, and I just got it to the point where it'll receive alarms again tonight. Figured out what the problem is, just got some more capacitors I need to replace internally, but for now, it receives alarms, so I can make a demonstration on it, finally. Uh, serial reports on the back don't work, that's the one thing that's missing, but, and the keyboard. But this is a very, very old central station receiver. This is a CRT, and eh, it seems to be showing up okay on camera. Now, um, this came out back when ITI was releasing their SX series and their caretaker panels. And it's designed around those, and this receiver actually is used for programming those panels. And because of that, one, okay, it's a four-line receiver, but it also has this front jack, which you can plug a panel straight into that. That's actually outputs phone line voltage. So you can plug a panel directly in there, and you can either have the panel just to the receiver or be use that for programming the panel because this can actually program the ITI panels. Now, obviously it's also an alarm receiver. It supports Radionics BFSK format, the ITI uh, format that uses a modem, and several pulse formats including the extended ones and 4 plus 2 and 3 plus 1. So we're going to be demonstrating 3 plus 1 and here's the panel that's going to be reporting, is this Vista. Oh, that's just a keypad for it, but it's hooked up. And it's using 3 plus 1 format. So, this receiver, I guess I'll give a little bit more background, is this one came from Norb at Obsolete Radionics. I'll put a link down in the description to his website. He's got some great alarm stuff on his site, so check him out. But yeah, I got this from him. And yeah, CRT is nice show you the back eh, maybe not well you can't really see but we got phone lines coming in massive cable for the serial port the serial ports currently can receive but they cannot transmit but i will be fixing that soon so that's how i actually got it programmed because this is entirely command line based so that is actually like a cursor and it, as you type it would put text across there and hit enter but yeah that keyboard port isn't functioning at the moment but hopefully i'll get it functioning soon so we're going to be doing some demonstrations here. So first off, I'm going to show troubles. So we're going to enter program mode and then exit it just to get it to restart. So and then exit programming mode. Now it's going to report a zone two trouble. Now three plus one format can't actually report the zone, but it reports just the, a trouble. And I don't know if it was just not a standardized term for ITI back then or what, but troubles don't exist within this receiver. They are all called supervisory. So if you see supervisory, it's probably a trouble. There we go, just acknowledge. Now, see if there's any more reports, which there isn't, so there we go. Account 420, because that's a nice number. And now it's three plus one format, so ignore the very first digit there. So it's just F, which is a supervisor. And 20 baud three plus one, well, three slash one on their format. There we go. So now let's do a test report. Oh, and you press clear to acknowledge them. So you see that one was assigned ID number 14. So if I press clear, it says number 14 acknowledged at this time. And yes, time of date is correct. I like that little ITI logo in the corner. So let's send a phone test here. And this receiver is kind of nice because you can actually specify what your report codes show up as. So on the Radionics one, I can't have zero show up as a test, but I always use zero as my test report code. This one, you can change that. So typically for three plus one format, it was zero through nine is an alarm. B is an opening report, C is a closing report. D is cancel report, or alarm cancel. E is a trouble restoral, and F is a trouble. But uh, you can have custom reporting code 
formatting with this receiver, which is kind of nice. So we reported zero, zero, well, just zero, and it showed up as a phone test. So that's kind of nice, and we'll go ahead and acknowledge it. Now, the buzzer in this isn't going off. I haven't actually checked if I have it set correctly, but it should only activate the buzzer if, like the buzzer in the receiver itself, if an alarm comes in that isn't canceled. So we're gonna send an alarm real quick. So let's just use these two panic keys. Over that speaker, it's kind of loud. I'll watch this happen. Yep, it works. There we are. So now if you see, zone one, alarm. Now, yep. There we go. That was a weird thing. Did you, did you hear that? I was entering the code and it just faded out. Yeah, that's Vistas for you. Anyway, receiver operated just how it should. So, I like that flashing alarm text there, and it highlights it. So, there we are, and CPU sent standard format. And now we're sending the cancel report. So, it activated the buzzer in the receiver for that alarm because it wasn't canceled in the same session. And we got a supervisory for the battery trouble that came in. And then I think it's going to buzz again for the cancel. So, there we are. Alarm canceled. So, eventually I'll set up 4 plus 2 reporting. I just don't feel like working on that right now. There we go. And I guess I forgot to turn off the reports waiting buzzer as well. But, now I guess I'll show activating an alarm and then canceling it in the same thing. So, let's do that again. So, that's an alarm and a cancel. And when it says ESUP on there, that's an echo suppression tone because back when there was echo suppression on lines, you could use that tone to disable it to get modems to communicate more reasonably. So this time, since the cancel report is sent in the same session, it shouldn't activate the buzzer. Maybe it did. Okay, I guess I don't have it set up right. Gosh, look at all this blinking texture. Okay. Yeah, obviously I don't have it configured correctly, but you can set it up so that if an alarm happens and it's canceled within the same session, it doesn't activate the buzzer. So, yeah. But that's what reports look like. And I would show a lot more about this receiver, but I can't because I, serial ports aren't functioning. It's got a lot of neat features that I haven't gotten into. It also supports listen-in, but eventually I'll get a good demonstration on it. But just wanted to show it for now. So that is probably the neatest piece of central station equipment to exist.